hockey here in Toronto as the Marlies and the Lehigh Valley Phantoms line up at center ice. Colin Greening and Cole Bargo and Greening right off the top gives it back to Rasmus Sandin. Playing with Vincent Loverde again as he goes inside the Phantom zone. Overskating it there, Morgan Klimchuk playing in his second game here with the Toronto Marlies. That pops up and makes some connection. Take a look at the starting goaltenders. Well, for the Lehigh Valley Phantoms, we've got Carter Hart, 20 year old from Sherwood Park, Alberta, 6'4 0 0 on the season, 3.46 and an 8.88 save percentage. And a Eamon McAdam for the Toronto Marlies, who's had an outstanding start at 4 0 and 3. Yet to lose in regulation. And Percy, Pennsylvania. I think that's part of the Lehigh Valley. I don't know how the official borders of Lehigh Valley are, but he might be inside of it. Clark Greening up ahead through the middle and across the line. He goes after it himself with Klinchuk coming after it too. Picks it up briefly behind the goal. And we got a penalty coming up, and it's going to be Morgan Klimchuk who tripped up TJ Brennan. Well, Morgan Klimchuk who scored in his debut in a Marley uniform yesterday is guilty of a tripping call here in the first minute of play as he tries to get in and get on the four check and takes the legs out from underneath the Phantoms player so the Lehigh Valley Phantoms will go to the first power play of the hockey game and their power play has been outstanding all year long as they are fifth in the American Hockey League not only on the power play but their penalty kill as well. Here's T.J. Brennan. There's the one time. Traffic out front. McAdam gets a pad on it and has to be good on the rebound, too. Juris. Down the right side, coming back shorthanded. Engball, and uh, he has that one lifted as they back things up. Engball goes off. He would usually be out there with Green. Juris would be. T.J. Brennan drops that one back. And Shasta sends that one in. Carry. Great carry after it as they try to move it back up the wall. They do get it up and out. Now Moore works back across the blue line. He's got Brennan in front of him, waits on it, and then tries to find Brooks out in front. Great chance by Corrado, and Carter Hart is there. Well, I love the fact that Frank Corrado notices and watches the play develop in front. He jumps to the net, and he gets a great opportunity in front of Carter Hart, but he makes a good save to keep this game scoreless as the Phantoms' power play will continue with just under a minute left on it. Well, there they Tried to send it down back to Trevor Moore, who was doing a good job on the PK, but it went up and over the windows. Well, the Toronto Marlies with a powder shorthanded goal yesterday afternoon against the Wilkesbury Scranton Penguins. And Trevor Moore, who leads the Marlies with 11 goals on the year, he throws the puck across and goes off the skate of that Adam Brooks and then right onto the tape of Frank Corrado, who one times a shot, but Carter Hart up to the task to keep Toronto from getting that first tally on the board. Juris taken out of the faceoff circle. Colin Greening center of the line too, so he might step in on that one. And now Juris got his stick on it, moves back across the line. He leaves this one behind. It's picked up by Callie Rosen. Juris, the one with the shorthanded goal yesterday. And now Greening again picking it up. And he gets it back to his defensive pairing, Rosen and Laverde. Waits on it, and Juris is happy enough to let that one go by with time ticking away here on the extra man opportunity for the Lehigh Valley Phantoms. Myers sends it back to his own blue line, and now Lear dumped in toward the goal. Pender McAdam into the corner, comes back up. They send it down the wall to see if somebody can pry off an opportunity. Back out front it comes and it gets by everybody. And Klimchuk comes out of the box and creating an opportunity the other way. Out front and off of Carter Hart's stick as Moore was right there. Well, good defensive play by the big defenseman, Philippe Myers, as he uses that long reach and gets his stick in the lane. Trying to get back onside Moore. Marchman drops it back. Marchman and Brooks. This line has been good for Sheldon Keith so far this year was good in the playoffs last year and now 
Working on the near side, Obi Kubel, backhander, blocked twice, and the third one went high into the glass. Little poke at the line, Marchman was nearly away. Brooks retreats, and now Loverde finding Jordan Subban as he gets it back across the line. We've got a slashing penalty coming up. And it'll go to the Phantoms, and the Marlies will get their first power play opportunity. And it's going to be Cole Bardreau in the box, and he's pleading his case to the official, but that's not going to be turned over the other direction. And uh, the Toronto Marlies will go to their first power play opportunity as the Phantoms head to the box. Is head coach Scott Gordon looking on, and just a little slash on the stick there. And uh, I wouldn't say that was. <laughs> Uh, overzealous by any means and uh, maybe a bit of an opportunity here certainly for the Marlies with their first power play opportunity of the hockey game scored three yesterday in their 7-4 victory over the Wilkes-Barre Scranton Penguins two of them with a five on three their away power play has been good no better than good 25 percent but their home power play had run into some trouble. They helped it out yesterday and have driven it up to over 16%. Now four across the line. Off his stick and right back out. They're going to have to run to this one because a shorthanded chance. Picks up. Amy McAdam the save and the rebound too. And we've got a penalty coming up here to the Marlies. Wow. Hooking. Well, I'll tell you, Eamon, Mc Eamon McAdam with a tremendous save off the stick of Tyrell Goldburn as he jumps into play along with Lear and they chase down this loose puck and a great burst to speed to pick up a nice little backhand drop pass right into the wheelhouse for Goulborn and he makes no mistake of getting all of it and McAdams got to go from his right to his left and he makes a terrific save to keep this game scoreless and it will nullify the power play opportunity for Toronto so we're going to see four on four action for the next minute and 30 seconds as to the penalty box goes Toronto on a hooking call and we'll have a little more open space here for these two very gifted offensive hockey clubs. Dimitro Timoshev sitting down and Subban gets behind his own goal. Here's Callie Rosen. Cross ice looking for Juris. Off the wall. A little poke by Rosen but it is picked up and fired right back in. McAdam Drifted out of his goal to see if he could play it. He did not. And Subban gathers it in again. Looking cross sights. Nice easy one up to Rosen. He puts the skates to it for a couple. And now Grunstrom works toward the goal. Grunstrom snapped out of the air by Carter Hart. Well, Carter Hart, the 20-year-old rookie, makes a tremendous save. And, uh, you know, that's something talking with Scott Gordon, who's a former goaltender, the head coach of Lehigh Valley spoke of the youngster today and uh, yeah he's got such fabulous numbers at the junior level and here as a pro he's starting to play much better his first month uh, got off to a bit of a rocky start but he's really starting to come along and uh, Scott Gordon says he makes a lot of plays look real easy and right there he showed that he can come out cut the angle down and flash a little leather with the left hand Rocco coming back in toward the goal, looking to feed it back out front, but a good defensive play by De Haas keeps it from getting anywhere. Four on four for the next 30 seconds. Obi Kudel retreats. He and De Haas pair up, trying to find an entry point into the Toronto zone. They decide to dump it in where Frank Corrado collects it. And Rasmus Sandin there. Sandin has that one lifted. Obi Kubel right back in, feeds it over to the near side into Haas, who was behind him. Veroni comes on. Always dangerous. Back up to Haas, looking for the one time, but it was just not quite in the wheelhouse for TJ Brennan. Obi Kubel, now a power play here for the Lehigh Valley Phantoms. The Haas in close. McAdam got a piece of it. He had Brennan right out front of him as it is played the length of the ice. Well, that was a play where it hits the glove and comes back the other way as Veroni and Brennan converge at the net in front of him trying to impede the vision. He gets a piece of it and it goes squirting out the other way. 
Barone across the line. Timoshoff out. Power play is exhausted. And coming back, Friedman to pick it up for the Phantoms. Rosen chase it down into the corner. Trying to move it along with Loverde. Back up and onto the stick of Klimchuk. Came over in the trade for Andrew Nielsen. The Calgary Flames across the line just a little early there was Loverde. And now Klimchuk is going to negotiate further. And they break it apart with thoughts about the future. There's no score here yet in period number one. Phantoms and Marlin. Well, we're going to get a look at Carter Hart, who was drafted by the Philadelphia Flyers with the second round pick in 2016 and uh, the top prospect uh, for Philadelphia and uh, some turmoil with goaltenders for so many years, oh, yeah. uh, not being able to find that guy. And they believe he is the guy that's going to be uh, the number one goaltender for this franchise for many years to come. Uh, he's getting, obviously, the experience of playing here in the American Hockey League. He won a World Junior Gold last year, a Silver the year before. He won the CHL Goaltender of the Year last, twice uh, as a junior. So uh, the credentials are all there. It's now just getting the experience under his belt before he gets thrust into the pressure cooker in oh. Philadelphia. Oh, and, and I, I got to tell you, that... Uh, that is a tall order and a huge position to fill there. Carter Hart, they, you can't uh, you can't push a goaltender. It's got to be about patience. Certainly at this level, you find out a little bit more. Now Engvall is into a little bit of a push and shove on the well, far you're, side you're of the faceoff. You look at Matt Murray, who won back-to-back oh, -back yeah. Stanley Cups for the Pittsburgh Penguins. As a rookie, he won Rookie of the Year in the American Hockey League. He was outstanding all season long, and then he took the jump to the National Hockey League. It's like he forced the Penguins to move him up to the next level because he proved he was better than the American Hockey League, and that's what Carter Hart has to do. Engvall feeding it out front, and Grunstrom was sliding in towards the goal. Hart pushes it aside as that puck looked to find a way. Josh Gersh throws the stick at the puck, and that was a, a little more difficult save than it looked like it was going to be. And now Jardine and Lear get tangled up. Sam Jardine checking back into the lineup. As it's played around behind the goaltender, Loverde. This one seems to have a little bit more intensity to it than you might expect. Lined up, big hard shot, doesn't make it through. Although when you look at the history of last season and the four game sweep maybe not Adam Brooks had that one nearly go in on a weird bounce off him yeah last year heading into the Eastern Conference Finals they were the top two teams in the East yeah and the Toronto Marlies disposed of them in four consecutive games which was a bit of a shock to everybody uh, but it's a new season and yeah. Right now, the Phantoms sit in fourth place, but two points out of second in the Atlantic Division, and the Toronto Marlies sit in fifth place, and uh, they've got an opportunity to jump into fourth place with a victory here today. So, obviously, a long season still ahead, oh, yeah. and uh, both clubs trying to find their way and navigate to set themselves up again for another opportunity for a playoff run. Well, the toughest thing, of course, is uh, and Marchman spilled into the corner. And we've got an interference call, and it's going to go against Friedman, I think. The Lehigh Valley Phantoms. Do that. Headed to the penalty box. Mark Friedman. The defenseman, Mark Friedman, the Toronto native who played at Bowling Green University and is in his second season here with the Lehigh Valley Phantoms. Will find himself in the box for two minutes or less as the Marlies will head to their second power play of the afternoon. Mueller wins it clean back, almost too effective. <laughs> All the way back to Aaron McAdam. And Rasmus Sandin in his first year, a rookie in the American Hockey League, first round pick of the Maple Leafs. As Timoshoff leads it down into the corner. After it, the Marlies Timoshoff comes back up high. Sandin almost looked like he had a shot. 
as Jeremy Bracco drifts into the corner. Back up for Sandin, finding Timishoff on the glove side. Out front, he was hoping to find Moore, but uh, Moore did not connect. Trying to keep the speed going through the power play. Timishoff drops it back. Moore through the middle, playing it off. Bronco is reaching for it. Moore chases it again to the end boards. Lift it up and over the head of Rasmus Sandin. He would have had to have been well beyond seven feet to pick that one up. And they're going to change out the bodies here just a minute and a bit into this power play opportunity. Juris takes a spin. Jordan Subban comes out across the blue line, drops it back, and here comes Engvall through the middle. Sends it off to Grunstrom, almost looked offside, but Grunstrom picks it up, and now Marchman looks in, drops back, Juris finding Subban, shot right into the grill of Grunstrom, back over for Engvall, off the boards, and ahead to Subban. Cross ice. That was a sharp one. Juris with the shot, the rebound, the backhand. It goes wide as Marchman gets three whacks at it. Subban again. Engball turns around and looks back up high, finding Subban toward the goal. Marchman, what a screen, but he sent it wide. Juris again. Here's Marchman looking out front. They had Grunge from there. Subban could not keep it in at the blue line, and the penalty expires. No, Mason Marchman, who's got five goals in his last seven games, parked on the top of the blue paint, gets a couple of whacks at an opportunity, but Carter Hart making sure he doesn't allow the puck to get by him as Toronto's power play comes up empty for the second time. Greening lets it go into the opposing zone. It's Klimchuk who is working against the boards. Greening gets it back up. Well, Verde, he turns on this one. Boy, he had a mind to get after it. He didn't want to make a mistake on it. Becchioni, the shot right in the breadbasket. Hanging on to it, Eamon McAdam. 9.33 left to go in this first period. These two teams still looking for offense. Well, Toronto General, Toronto Maple Leaf General Manager Kyle Dubas in the house is uh, the hockey club, the Maple Leafs, with the victory last night in St. Paul, Minnesota. Uh, here to watch his Toronto Marlies perform and congratulations of getting the deal done and having William Nylander signed and sealed and ready to get back in the fold for the Toronto Maple Leafs and uh, couldn't well, have come at a better time. Well, and they had a whole organizational day. Oh, yeah, you're talking about with five <laughs> minutes left. You bet. Hey, as long as it got done and uh, you know what? Good on on Kyle is uh, that's a uh, big business to take care of to make sure that uh, this club continues to roll along uh, the way they have out the gate for Toronto Maple Leafs and another victory on the road last evening. Uh, we saw, saw so much of William Nylander here. Emerson Clark playing it along hard off the stick of Greening. And now here's Verone back in as he dodges by. Oh, front scores! Rosen! Actually, the touch on it at the end, I think, and Verone always dangerous always looking to the goal he finds a route and he puts the phantoms up one nothing well phil veroni the reigning mvp of the american hockey league he makes no mistake as he's got a terrific burst of speed he splits the two defenders one is a forward in in the emerson clark and the defenseman and he finds the lane and he throws it towards goal i think he's looking to make a pass Thank and you. it goes off the skate of toronto defenseman callie rosen and, and by the goaltender eamon mcadam and the lehigh valley fans have opened the scoring and veroni who's the second leading scorer in the american hockey league gets his 10th goal of the year in his 27th point another massive year Back across the line, Marchman playing it back in, and Moore with a dangerous one. Back over, Sandin. Moore works the blue line and then comes down along the boards. Marchman trying to get it back to Brooks. He's knocked down in the process. Will Verde to the far side. We've got a penalty coming to the Phantoms. A cross check, and the Marlies will go to the power play to see if they can't 
get one back here. Into the box goes Mikhail Vorobiev. Well, Mikhail Vorobiev, former fourth round pick of the Philadelphia Flyers, down in the in the defensive zone and just cross checks the backside and gives them the second shot almost in the back of the neck. And an easy call for the official on that one. So Toronto now trailing by a goal will look to see if they can get their power play working for them as they were 0 for 2 in the first couple chances. Chris Mueller over 60% in the faceoff circle. He won one clean. But it went all the way back to McAdam. This time he doesn't put a lot of sauce on it. And it stays in, but more falling at the line. Sandin trying to keep it in. A little extra work, and Sandin does keep it in along the wall. Mueller cross ice, gets it into some open territory where Bracco picks it up. Jeremy Bracco along to Sandin, and he lets one fly. Rasmus Sandin has scored from that very spot. But this time, Carter Hart whips out the glove and hangs on. Well, you're right, Rasmus Sandin, Toronto's first round pick. This past draft, four goals, seven points in 11 games. But there, that wrist shot from about 55 feet away, and Carter Hart with no traffic in front will stop that every time. Rocco looking out, and Mueller with a chance. Chris Mueller, good eyes to get back on that rebound, but it doesn't fool Carter Hart. Mueller throws one through the middle, hoping maybe it would land on somebody. Get back across Mueller sending it down the wall. Timishoff is going to have to chase Friedman for it, who picks it up and tried to play it out and threw it in the back of his own man. Now on the second effort, and it's down the ice and a couple of changes for the Marlies. Well, Scott Gordon saying to me before the game that in game number two this year, they gave up five power play goals against. Since then, in the last 18 games, they've only given up seven goals, and that's why they sit fifth in the league. Marshman out front. He was looking for Timishoff, but didn't connect. Goldborn. That stick there from Juris got caught up and he let it go immediately. No infraction. As Subban drops that one back. He had Cole Bargo right in his hip pocket as Marchment reaches for it. Trying to get it back to Grundstrom who blew a tire there. And Subban. Got Casa right on top of him and Grundstrom has to come back to help out. Time ticking here on the power play for the Marlies. Sudan drops it back, and here comes Pierre Engvall. Smooth skate across the line, but he left the puck behind. And they back it up. Roviev already on his feet, ready to get back into the hockey game. And here he comes. Lifted back through the middle. That'll get by everybody. Bit of a spinner. And Rosen comes back, and they're going to call that one on the icing as Vorobiev was already out of the box. Well, the Lehigh Valley Phantoms, three for three on their penalty kill in this one. And uh, all on the same page, obviously, as the Marlies trail one nothing in this contest on a goal by Phil Veroni for Lehigh Valley. And we'll get set down in the Phantom zone as they've got five Fresh bodies out there after that penalty kill. Here comes Emerson Clark back into the hockey game, and he's been off for more than a little while as Rosen tries to keep it in at the blue line. Kept out of the Marley zone, greening, working back. Asked Clark to get in after it, throws the body to it, and now Clark will battle for it along the end boards. He takes a look up, thought he might have picked up a penalty. They did not. And Greening turning back and trying to find somebody out front. Klimchuk comes in to investigate. Greening picks it up and puts it on goal. And that allows the Phantoms to recover briefly. Now here's a chance for Connor after the puck. And he sent it high and wide into the glass. Back over for Brennan. He waits on it. Shoots. And a save by McAdam as Greening tries to play it up and out. Vecchioni back at the line. The Phantoms now trying to take over the pace of play. Corrado pursues into the corner. Moore reels it in and then chips it up and out. And the Haas sends it right back in. But they're going to make some changes. And allows Corrado to pick it up. And the Marlies to set up out in front of him. 
Marley's 5 3 and 2 in their last 10. But the Lehigh Valley Phantoms 7 and 3 in their past 10 games. So both teams going in the right direction. Well we've got the annual teddy bear toss game coming up on December 8th. And you'll want to be here for that one. All toys will be donated to the Young Street Mission. Marley's.ca 416-597-PUCK. Always a terrific game. That's December 8th. There's a shot off some bodies out front. Rebound still there. Side of the goal and trying to pick it up for the wraparound. Just could not connect. Wow, what an opportunity for Lehigh Valley. Out front again. Bonneman reaching for it is McAdam. And he comes up with the puck as he swats the paw out. Well, Eamon McAdam having to come up some great saves to keep this just a one goal game. Phil Veroni is the one who has the one so far in this hockey game. Their goal here is they continue to lead 1 nothing with 449 to play here in period number one. Chris Mueller giving out some instruction here before the drop of the puck. As Veroni opposite brings this one back. TJ Brennan off the wall. Red Carey down low, out front, takes a right turn, but it comes back to Jeremy Bracco, and now to Marley's three wide. Loverde out to the stick side, waits and tried to find Mueller coming right down the slot. Did not connect. Basso sends it back to Friedman, who brings it across the line as they get to the end board. Out front, scores Veroni with his second of the night as he found it out front and put it in the back. Well, Phil Vero, opportunistic, no question, but he's a guy that's counted upon to be the man to finish plays off. And you come down, you chip it in the corner, and then you jump on the loose puck. And they just do an excellent job as Casse picks up the puck from behind the goal line, throws it out front. It gets chipped off a stick, and then cruising down the heart of the slot is Phil Veroni, and he just chips it up over the glove of goaltender Eamon McAdam. And just like that, it's a 2-0 advantage for the Lehigh Valley Phantoms. Samuelson moves that one, in ball. Trying to get the touch on it. Boy, we have seen a lot of Phil Veroni over the years in the American Hockey League, and he is uh, one of those players that no matter if he has the puck or not, he's doing something that uh, makes you think he's going to do something. Back through the middle. Jardine comes all the way back. Plays it up along to Subban, who just gives it over to Bardo. And they'll try it again. Jardine and Subban. Both have been out for a while, find themselves on defense. Some fresh legs. Tapped off Engball's stick and Jardine gets it back again. Well, in Lehigh Valley, this is their third game in three nights. Uh, they played Friday night in Laval they, with an overtime victory, and then last night in Belleville, Ontario, and here, Toronto, just their second game, and it looks to me like the Phantoms have the better legs so far in this one as they've been coming nonstop here and forcing the game and taking it to the Toronto Marlies. Well, they won on a penalty shot last night. Here's Rosen rips one on goal, and Carter Hart comes up with another save. 2.58 left to go in this first period. Callie Rosen having a heck of a year, that's for sure. Well, he is, and uh, like what I've seen from him, there's no question. Seven points in his last seven games. He's fourth in defense scoring, and uh, the third highest scoring defender is T.J. Brennan, also in this game on the Lehigh Valley side. Uh, but the skating ability of Callie Rosen sets him apart from a lot of different guys, and uh, you see him jumping to the play and putting that goal in. Carter Hart, though, makes the save and makes sure there's no second opportunity. Mueller will have to exit. In comes Mason Marchman, who's actually pretty solid in the face-off circle. I don't like the look of that one. Well, that one traveled the length of the ice just off the face-off, nobody even touching it. So it seemed unlikely that they were going to let it stand, and they do not. Here we go again. Off the draw into the corner. 
Up and out. The confidence of a two-goal lead. Here's Peroni coming across the line. Back up to the line, but nobody home as they were interested in a change. Well, here in Toronto, they like to see a lot of different teams. And they only see this Flyers affiliate once this season. Loverde back behind the goal. Peroni, long shot blocked out front. Here's Brennan again with it. Put back over to the far boards as Marchman comes to it in the corner, waits on it, and then decides he's got Loverde to work with. And he plays it back up. Brennan tried to send it right back the other way as Mueller got a touch to it. Yesterday, they saw the Penguins affiliate for the first time. They only see them twice this season. And the, on Wednesday, they'll see the Bruins affiliate only once this year. Yeah, and it's unfortunate, but uh, it's the travel costs uh, in the American Hockey League, so they try to uh, line it up where that other division here in the Eastern Conference, the Atlantic Division, you'll play each team only once home, once away, and uh, as a result, you see some teams maybe a little too often, but... Well, there's always... Uh, the interesting part about games here in Toronto is there's always, of course, fans of, of other teams because uh, hockey appetite being so ravenous in Ontario. Brooks back over for in Canada as well. And you've always got folks who want to see their favorite team's prospects. Connor looking for it out front, and uh, he did not get it. Brennan escapes into the corner and tries to play it back up and out, and he does. They don't bring it across the line as Timoshoff tries to find it. He comes to the bench. Sandin all the way back. Time ticking away here in the first period. Grunstrom tried to feed it back over to Brooks. The Haas is able to pick it up and move it along. Well, you can see when you get a lead exactly what that means to the energy in your boots. Here comes Engvall across the line, drives in, looks, he shoots, and that one makes contact with the post. Well, some excellent speed to the outside, and didn't look like you got much velocity on that shot, but it does kiss off the outside of that left goal post and out the other way. Rosen waits, shoots out front, and it made contact. It drops, Engvall tries to move it along. Grundstrom with the shot, and... That is stopped by Carter Hart. You know, Carl Grunstrom got a good opportunity right there, and using that left shoulder, Hart keeps Toronto off the board. Bang ball back. Trying to drill one down low, but it's off the shin pads and right back the other way. Here's McDonald to it. Sandin meets up with him. Out front it comes. Rebound Samuelson sends it wide. Around behind it goes for McDonald again. Trying to find a little bit of help up high with Paul Bardro. It comes up the boards to Moore. He's got some speed with him. He's got Brooks and he's got Sandin. He turns back, trying to feed it over to Marchman, driving toward the goal. Marchman and time runs out in the first period as Brooks, Marchman, Moore, and Sandin look to get that last opportunity. Well, the Lehigh Valley Phantoms have been all about Phil Veroni. He has picked up two goals in the opening period to put the Flyers affiliate up 2-0 after 20 minutes of play. We'll be back with the intermission next on Leafs Nation Network. This is early, some chances late, but Phil provides the thrills for the Phantoms in the first part. Well, you got the high, two high scoring teams in the league going at it here. The Marlies get some opportunities early. Carter Hart makes a good job of keeping them off the board, but it's Phil Veroni gets his 10th of the season. He splits two defenders and goes off the skate of Callie Rosen and by the Toronto goalkeeper, Eamon McAdam, for a 1 0 advantage. The Marlies would try to tie it on a power play, but Hart again with a couple of good stops. McAdam forced to come up with some big saves as the Phantoms would continue to pressure and try to see if they could add to their lead. Late in the period, though, a chip pass from Greg Carey to Phil Veroni, and he tucks it past McAdam, and it's a 2-0 advantage. And the 10th and 11th goals of the season for Phil Veroni, 
is the difference in this one as they've got a 2 nothing advantage after 20 minutes of play. Well, the Toronto Marlies have come back in this season a couple of times down by a couple of goals, and they've been outscored in the first with strong periods in the second. We'll be back with the second period after the break. Well, when the goalie carousel starts spinning, it's pretty hard to see who might step out and grab the brass ring. And uh, the Philadelphia Flyers organization certainly has a lot of possibilities. Well, you're right about that. As you look at the, the goaltenders who have played for the Flyers this year, Neuwirth, Calvin Pickard, Alex Lyon, Anthony Stolars. you got to throw Brian Elliott in the mix oh, there, yeah. too. So that's five. And uh, Carter Hart, obviously the heir apparent. And it's something where uh, I think the Flyers organization who uh, the, the general manager was fired this past week, Ron Hextall, uh, and who is ever going to go in there to take over uh, as the new general manager is going to have to look at the situation. And obviously, I'm sure going to be preaching patience with young Carter Hart. Long one, Eamon McAdam hangs on to it. And into this second period, the... Well, and it's funny, you know, if you look at the game of hockey this year in the National Hockey League, here in the American Hockey League, even around the junior ranks, uh, goals have been uh, scored plenty this year. Oh, yeah. And uh, the skill continues to get better and better. And I think the paring down of the goaltending equipment is you're really starting to see the effects of it. Seen a lot more goals going uh, through goaltenders uh, than you've ever seen before. And as a result, uh, much more high scoring and entertaining affairs. Well, Mike Ditchin and I talked last night after the game. He's the director of minor league operations here for the Toronto Marlies and Toronto Maple Leafs organization. And we did a little informal math and uh, figured out that it's about a quarter of goal per game in the American Hockey League from the full season last year to the 20 game mark this year. And uh, that's per team. So that's a half goal a game. That's a huge increase. We've got a penalty coming up here to the Phantoms. When you put that kind of uh, extra offense on, it doesn't mind. The fans don't mind it, Bob. Oh, you're right about that. Head coaches drives them nuts, but everybody else seems to be pretty happy about it. And we're going to get a cross-checking penalty again for the second time. It's going to be Mark Friedman going to the box and cross-checking the first time as well. And head coach Scott Gordon not too pleased with the call, but the Toronto Marlies, who trail 2 nothing in this one, will go back to the power play, and that's right into the, the back of the neck. And uh, Friedman, the Toronto native, coming to town. I'm sure he's got lots of friends and family here getting a little overzealous in this one as he sits in the box for the second time. Well, they'd like to pick up a win, no doubt. Here's Moore. Extra something on it. And that shot hits Moore out front. And down he goes, but he's straight back up as Sandin has to retreat. Some folks here in this Phantoms organization still thinking about last year. Perhaps Rocco playing it back to Moore. Little flip flop up to Sandin and it comes back to Moore. He had a little trouble with it, but he does get it to Brocco and now Sandin trying to send it back over to Timishoff, taken away and right back the other way on a free pass back and it's stopped by Eamon McAdam. What a great opportunity. Back the other way for Barovia. Wow, and that is a massive save for goalkeeper Eamon McAdam to keep his club in this one as they trail 2-0. Could be three now, and uh, the Marlies power play will continue as they look to see if they can cut the deficit, but a huge save for the Marlies goalkeeper. Played off into the corner. These Phantoms playing like they're in a bad mood. Well, Vorobriev does an excellent job of reading the play as Sandin looks to go cross ice with the pass. He picks it off, and he was off to the races all by himself. Juris finding Marchman. He looks back. Subban high on the line. Waits on it, and then plays it back to Engball. He wants some help. On the backhand, that one will come all the way back down the ice as well, and the Marlies really won't. Get much of an opportunity here on the power play unless they manufacture one in the next seven seconds. Here comes Drunston. He just might. 
on the backhand. Grundstrom had Marchman out front, couldn't get him the pass, and now we're back to five on five. Rosen lifts one behind the goal, off the glass. Comes back out front where Phil Baroni is there to pick it up, and he takes it away, Marchman does. And he waits for help. Back over, Rosen waits, shoots, and Rosen with a wicked shot. Lifted back down the ice. That one takes a good hop for the Phantoms, and Corrado is able to get right back to it as he looks ahead. Emerson Clark along the green, finding some speed, working the puck over the far side for Morgan Klimchuk. Green back to it again. Kicks it to his forehand, but can't get back to the puck. Some good defensive play. Rosen is able to capture it. Now we've got Vecchioni, who is down and slow to get up. Well, Vecchioni got a stick, and I believe it was from Morgan Klimchuk, uh, who swings at the puck, and uh, as Vecchioni is down on the ice, and he gets oh, the shaft leaking. to the stick in the face, and you're right, he's leaking. As uh, He's not too pleased, I'm sure, as... He's going to have to go off for some repairs and no they're they're talking about it but I don't think there's been a penalty called on the play as certainly an accidental play but and you see there is Vecchioni goes down and trying to keep his balance was Klimchuk and he sweeps around with his stick and I think it just catches the bridge of the nose of Mike Vecchioni and uh, he's going to head to the locker room I'm sure to get some repairs but we'll go back to the shorthanded opportunity that the Lehigh Valley Phantoms almost extended their lead to three as Mikhail Vorobiev picks up the, a pass and picks it off and he's alone all by himself fakes the shot goes to the backhand and McAdam does an excellent job of sticking with it and he goes down and pushes with the right and gets that left pad down to not allow Vorobiev to get the third goal for the Phantoms as they will continue to lead 2-0 with 16-26 to play here in period number two. Yeah. A little bit of a cleanup crew comes out on that one and we will uh, wait till their job is uh, complete. And the referee takes a look on the linesman as well as the Toronto Marley's looking to find a way to pick up a couple of goals here as Phil Veroni. Well, and I think it's important here, and I'm sure Sheldon Keefe would talk about this after 20 minutes of play. You're down by a pair after 20, but let's not take any unnecessary chances here sure. and let them get the next goal to make it a 3 nothing hockey game. Let's not forget that this is a club that's in their third game. We're only playing our second game on the weekend, right. and let's wear them down. It's all about getting pucks down into the offensive zone, get our cycle game going. Let's wear them out, make them defend a little bit, because if you get one, obviously it's going to help get some juice in our legs and maybe get an opportunity to wear them down that much to allow us to get back in this game and come back. There's Adam Brooks as he sends it in. Trevor Moore goes after it. Marchman reaches back for it, but beyond him, and now four wide come the Phantoms. Shot right on. Amy McAdam. Cross ice. It is Brooks who finally recaptures it. And sends it down on an edge for Marchman to go after it, making some contact. Moore steps around at one, but has to work along the boards. He tried to chip it up to Loverde, perhaps as in comes Brooks to try and separate them from the puck. That one will go the distance and be picked up on the icing call. Well, the Toronto Marlies play a good portion of their games here at Coca-Cola Coliseum, but they also get to play four games at the Scotiabank Arena where the Leafs play, and they'll do that on Boxing Day. Join the Toronto Marlies as they take on the Belleville Senators. Marlies.ca, 416-597, puck. For tickets. Well, what a perfect Christmas gift is you can head well, to Bob, on Boxing Day. I, I, all right, I'll get you tickets. You know, that's a <laughs> big hint you just dropped at my feet there. The, uh, I'll get you into the game. Oh, thank you very much. <laughs> we'll, of course, have that game on Leafs Nation Network. Won't cost me a thing. Here's Timishaw. But French. Here's Corrado. 
Once he turns around, he lost an edge, went down. Well, you know, you owe me some friendship dues. <laughs> hey, I, we, we got a ring together, you know. It's, uh, it's okay. I go, though, it was these guys that got it. So that's all right. Now, Dimitro Timoshev, who picked up his Calder Cup ring at the ceremony on Thursday night, had a career year last year. Looks to put up better numbers again this year as well. Yep. Now in year number three, yeah, you want him to take that next step. And uh, he had such a great playoff last year and real instrumental in uh, that Calder Cup championship, no question about it. But he wants to take it to another level this year. Juris needs a new opponent. Bunneman comes out. Mayer comes in and. It is Subban who moves it along. Rosen waits on it. Cross ice, finding Jerk. He comes across the line and leaves it back for Grunstrom. Quick feet by Subban. Out front tip scores. Bing ball. Four minutes and 58 seconds into the second period, the Marlies cut the Lehigh Valley Phantoms lead in half. 2-1. As Engvall tips one by. Well, great job by Grunstrom to gain the line and then allow himself to be tied up, but have the ability to let Subban pick up the loose puck. He just throws it towards the goal and parked out about five feet out on top of the blue paint. Is Pierre Engvall, that big body, he gets a stick on it, redirects it past Carter Hart, and the Toronto Marlies on the board. It's a 2-1 hockey game. Rosen. Wilcox gets a stick on it now. That's it. It's a shot on and stopped by McAdam. Rosen again gets by Moore on the far side. Samuelson trying to play it by Trevor Moore. Well, I'll tell you how quickly did the Phantoms come right back as Casa gets by the defense and in alone and a huge save again by the goaltender McAdam for Toronto to keep this just the one goal game uh, but the Phantoms came right back after giving up the first goal of the game for Toronto. Long shot got redirected as Brooks plays it behind the goal quick to it low verde great carry on top of him and it is Brooks who escapes the Marley zone looking for more and boy Brooks took a bit of a hit. Here's Connor waiting on it. Out front, stopped by McAdam, and Marchman plays it back up and out as it was getting a little scrambly there for the Toronto Marlies. Myers misplays it. Brooks behind him. Vorobiev plays it to the far side. He's got some help, and Obi Kubel out front. It comes, stopped by McAdam as he gets the toe on it, and now the blocker, too. It's coming fast and furious for Eamon McAdam. Well, I tell you, this... Phantoms club they must have been some ticked off after they gave up that first goal for Toronto because they have come right back and back-to-back -back shifts all kinds of opportunities to try to restore the two goal advantage Emerson Clark Brennan Klimchuk very nearly pulled that one away and strolled in and he couldn't make contact as it's lifted back the other way McDonald rips one on goal and boy he got Eamon McAdam leaning back Wow, it's like he totally lost his balance on that play as, you know, it goes up and over top, but McAdam falls into the goal after that shot from the bad angle. Well, that was like letting one fly at your little brother on a Sunday afternoon. Road hockey game. It was Timoshaw. He's trying to get to it in the corner. He got knocked down to his knees and then flipped over. And now Subin has to come back. Boy, some energy right into the skates after the goal for the Phantoms. That one looked like it will be picked up for icing and brought all the way back. And the Toronto Marlies uh, survive a little bit to take a breath here on the icing call. Well, and you know, it's something that you need your goaltender to come up with big saves at the right time. Yeah. And 
Eamon McAdam here in this second period. Let's go back to the shorthanded breakaway. Uh, could have been a 3 nothing game, so it allowed them to stay at just 2 nothing. They get the goal uh, by Engvall to make it a 2-1 game, but then right away, the Phantoms come right back, and they've had about four terrific opportunities to get that two-goal lead back in the game. But Eamon McAdam, Johnny on the spot here for the Toronto Marlies without question. Down the right side and across the line, they say Mueller's offside. He doesn't think so. Pierre Engvall has got the Marlies on the board here in the second period. They still trail by one on Leafs Nation Network. Well, Andy McAdam had 14 shots against him in period number one, but here in period number two, seven shots in the first eight minutes of play and a couple, three, that were from uh, the difficult variety, no question, is uh, grade A scoring chances for the Lehigh Valley Phantoms on seven shots so far in the period and McAdam has come up with seven saves and allowed his club to get back in this one as it's now a 2-1 hockey game with 12 minutes and three seconds to play here in period number two. Well, I would think I might find just standing there of the difficult variety. <laughs> Some are tired of puck. Those come, most pucks are coming hard off those sticks. There is some whip to them to be sure. Clear across the line and a long one that Eamon McAdam snares and just hangs on to. I'm going to drop this one well, over Taylor to his side. Lear, the Saskatoon native played three years with the Portland Winterhawks in the Western Hockey League. Drafted in the fourth round by the Philadelphia Flyers back in 2012. His fifth year as a pro last year played 39 games for the Philadelphia Flyers a goal and five points finds himself back in the American Hockey League this year and uh, certainly a guy that they're looking for to get going offensively three goals seven points in the first 16 games out front knocked to the near side boards and ball and Grunstrom away and ball looking to find a little bit of speed past Friedman waits on it and then brings it back to the middle. Sandin throws one on goal. Rebound. And still whacking at it. Engvall. And it is finally picked up. Obi Kubel up ice. Sandin in the middle of it. Well, they like that home run. Teams do. But when it connects, they get a great opportunity. But it did not connect there. Well, Carter Hart makes the initial save on that long shot with traffic in front, but he can't come up with the rebound as it squirts free in Toronto that close to tying it up. Jardine with a bouncer. That was a little bit more difficult than maybe the first read. Well, you're right. I think that's redirected by Grunstrom off the stick of Jardine, but you know, a play where Toronto gains the zone and some good skiing and done by Pierre Engvall, and he dishes off to Sandin and he gets that wrist shot through on goal and then later on in the shift the shot from the middle of the ice by Sam Jardine, Jardine yeah. with the wrister and redirected about six feet out in front of Carter Hart by Grunstrom and he comes up with a save and doesn't allow a second opportunity. Big bomb off the windows. Rosen and now uh, Moore spins back into the corner. Marchment with it, lays it back to Moore, he races to it and tries to send it around behind the goal for Marchment, but it's stick in the way and the Phantoms get a hold of it. Rosen challenges at the line as it makes its way the rest of the way. It is played right back to Rosen. Cross over to Corrado and he lays it out front, looking for Moore. Across the line, staying on side, Marchment. Here's Brooks in close and he makes contact with the stick. A Carter Hart Moore on the backhand and he tried to sneak one by the five hole but Carter Hart he's been good. Well he has and Trevor Moore who's got his team leading 11 goals and goals in each of the past two games looking to see if he can tie this hockey game up as he gets this puck on the backhand and he tries to slide it through the legs of Carter Hart but he makes sure that he closes it up and doesn't allow a second opportunity. Juris comes in to take the draw. 
as he takes a look back and had a bit of a timing problem there. And they fixed that up. And now it slides by Wilcox and he gets some pressure from Juris and Engvall who tried to find Grunstrom out front. Juris looked to walk back out front, but the puck knocked off his stick. Samuelson playing it back. McDonald, Juris is right there again. Samuelson, this time Engvall. Grunstrom, what a stop by Hart. The rebound picked up by Juris and Hart stops that one too. Wow, we've got a goaltending battle going here in this one and Carter Hart save for save with McAdam as he comes up with a dandy with the blocker to keep this game or a one goal hockey game. Clark with Klimchuk, backhand Klimchuk! No, denied by Carter Hart. He got in just maybe a little too close to get the shot away that he would have liked. It remains 2-1, but the chance is coming at both ends of the ice. Shots 23-20 favoring the uh, Lehigh Valley Phantoms, but Carter Hart makes an outstanding save on with the blocking glove on Carl Grunstrom, and then the Marlies with a second opportunity, and it's going to be Emerson Clark trying to feed Morgan Klimchuk, and he gets the chance. It sneaks off the stick a little bit, but still, Carter Hart having to scramble, come up with a save to keep Toronto off the board and have this still continue a 2-1 hockey game. Well, we talked about it off the top. The goaltenders would have to bring their A game today. <laughs> they absolutely have. They have seen some action. Here's Juris. In against Veroni. One back. As Veroni heads up ice. He plays it into the open territory as Sandin comes back into the end boards with it. Bunneman moving it. Still trying to hold off Juris on the play. Quick eye back to the official from Juris and Bunneman. Behind the goal. Sandin trying to make contact there with Lear. A little bit of room to roam here for Veroni. That is a dangerous proposition. Veroni trying to work back out of the corner. They play it behind the goal. Grunstrom has got Brennan getting after it. And now Veroni from behind the goal is looking out front. Finds the man diving in, but that is blocked on the play. Marley's holding off here the Phantoms. Long shot comes back up the boards as Engvall gets to it. Tries to force it back up the wall, but Lear is right there. Little help from Grunstrom. And going fishing Juris on this expedition too. Finally, Engvall knocked down and Lear trying to work back to the goal. Engvall will pick it up again. And Verovia steals it away. To the far side, Brennan looks out front. Obi Kubel was right there, but Eamon McAdam was too. As well, he grabs up the puck. After Toronto gets some sustained pressure in the Lehigh Valley zone, it's the Phantoms' turn to head in the Toronto zone as they get some pressure themselves. And the Toronto Marlies can't get the puck out. TJ Brennan, the former Marley and two time Eddie Shore Trophy winner shot from the half wall and McAdam makes it easy save and gets the whistle so that both clubs can get some fresh recruits. Back off the wall. This one out front. Rosen a step to it up top. Scores! Wow, that one got upstairs in a hurry as uh, Obi Kubel Beats Eamon McAdam for goal number three for the Lehigh Valley Phantoms. Well, Nicholas Obey Cabell shows excellent coordination to be able to pick up this loose puck and put it that quickly top shelf. But the innocent play going towards the goal, the Toronto defenseman, Callie Rosen, tries to kick the puck and it goes off his foot, but it doesn't, it goes in the wrong direction. It, Obey Kubel does an excellent job of turning and he whistles it up and over top of the blocking glove of goaltender Eamon McAdam. And just like that, the two goal advantage restored for the Phantoms. It's now a 3 1 hockey game. Well, you got the feeling something was going to happen on either side, and certainly the Phantoms have held the Marley zone for the last uh, 
minute or so. And they created the opportunity, and the Marlies now find themselves back in a, a familiar spot, down by a couple of goals. Frank Corrado waits on it. Here's more. Cross ice. Marchman is there as he sends it in. The Haas quickly by everybody. That one's going to be picked up on the icing call with 718 left to go. Rasmus Sandin in his first year here with the Toronto Marlies. Well, we'll get another look at the, the third goal for the Lehigh Valley Phantoms. And again, it goes off the skate, but Obey, Obey Cabell, the Sorrell Quebec native, and you know, four years with Valdor in the Quebec Major Junior Hockey League, a two time 38 goal guy, and he knows how to find the back of the net. And his third season with the Lehigh Valley Phantoms, 18 goals last year, looking to see if he can get up to that 20 goal plateau this year. Yeah, sometimes you look at that play and you think, wow, that was a desperate, lucky shot kind of thing, but there are guys who can get it done in that situation, and certainly a guy who knows how to score some goals did there. Sandin retreats to it as he's got Greg Carey right on top of him. Sandin trying to play it back up the wall. It didn't get by. They're only able to get a stick on it as Loverde. Clark gives it a tap ahead. Klimchuk was after it. And from behind, Loverde knocked down by Carey. Certainly could have been an interference call as Carey drops the Toronto veteran. Engvall, search, and that one right into the goaltender. Hart comes up with another save as the Marlies look to find a way to consistently put it where he isn't. Well, you know, you got to move the puck and try to gain some speed through the neutral zone, and it's Laverde to Engvall, and then he gets on his horse as the defense backs up. He tries to lose, use that defenseman as a screen and fire the puck looking to try and get between the pads of Carter Hart, but gets it up a little too high and hits him right on the crest of the Phantom. Back up, Subban, long shot, and a good stick by Hart. Brunstrom picks it up again. Turns, and he hits the deck. Turning around to pick it up. Reese Wilcox, long pass ahead. That one ends up in the bench of the Phantoms. Well, Obi Kubel comes up with the latest for the Phantoms. They're up 3-1 here in Toronto. Now well, we're going to get a look at the Atlantic Division standings in which the Lehigh Valley Phantoms are in, and they sit in fourth place, 20 points, but just two points uh, out uh, you know, uh, sorry, 26 points, two points out of second as they sit in fourth. The second, third, and fourth play team, place teams, all with 12 wins coming into the weekend here, Sunday's games. And, uh, you know, had a great talk with head coach Scott Gordon before the game today, and he feels really good about his hockey club. He says, yeah, I know it's a long season, but, you know, we've got a real good group here. We've got a great mix of veterans, some good young players, and obviously, uh, we're going to know that we're in for a battle all season long, and it all starts with trying to get in a position to get home ice advantage come playoff time. Well, Mike Vecchioni, as you see, back on the ice, we're in the fishbowl, and he is uh, right back to it. Here's Jeremy Bronco. Turns, he lost, and he goes down, and now back come the Phantoms. Schumann has to be good to get back. Lifted back go, go. in. Everyone gets back on side as Vecchioni challenges. Rosen. Well, you never know in this league just how things can change. Here's Leader trying to get it to the goal. It's not just the call-ups, the, the injuries, the trades. It's a whole lot of things can happen to your season to blow it up. It almost has to be a perfect alignment. Sandin at the blue line, keeps it in, and plays it over for Moore. Moore and Sandin combine to bring it in. Sandin has it tapped off his stick, and Moore gets back to it. Through the middle. 
Friedman, a long shot in, and Amy McAdam covers it up. When we talk about Rasmus Sandin and what his situation is, he there is no timeline for Sandin in the American Hockey League. It's not the same as sending him back to junior after 10 games in the NHL. Well, so. you're right. Uh, he's just 18 years of age. He's the 29th pick in the 2018 draft by the Toronto Maple Leafs. And not in today's game, Timothy Lilligren, uh, last year's first round pick for the Toronto Maple Leafs, another product of Sweden, uh, who uh, won a Calder Cup last year as an 18 year old defenseman, is 19. So they got an 18 and a 19 year old defenseman here playing for the Marlies. And I'm um, thinking that uh, we're going to see both these youngsters get an opportunity to go and play in the World Junior Championships in Victoria and Vancouver over the Christmas time season and uh, we'll look forward to that and I know that uh, it's always on the top of everybody's schedule to watch the World Junior Tournament and uh, the goaltender that leads this game today 3-1 Carter Hart was the gold medal winner for Canada last year. Mason Marshman comes in to take the draw against Cole Bardo it rolls back up to the blue line Myers Sends it low. Marchman poking along the board. Good play by the Phantoms and some good energy in their third game in less than three days. Or less than 72 hours. Loverde, Sandin falling on the play. And now here's Goldburn out front. Tip back to the blue line. Myers sends one in, but it's off Sandin out front. There's a chance knocked away. Bargro is right there. Brunstrom plays it back out. Uh, too much separation between Toronto's defense and their forwards. And when you don't get the puck out, it spells trouble. And that's what happens. And they get bailed out on a good defensive play by Vincent Laverde, the veteran. Bargro with the four check. Lifted back out into center. Of course, Timothy Lilligram was knocked out of yesterday's hockey game. That's why he's not in today. And uh, Jordan Subban took his place in the lineup. And Andreas Boardman, who's usually in the lineup, found himself unable to go this afternoon. And Sam Jardine stepped in for him. Nice, nice to have the depth of a couple of extra defensemen to be able to plug the hole right away. Carry along the wall, Green. Casa plays it along, and now everybody trying to find a way to get that puck to do what they want it to do. It's played back down the ice. Rosen will gather it in. Oftentimes, you try to bring out a little bit more energy in this third game and see how long it can drive you into the game, and then sit back and say, "Okay, we did what we need to do. Now maybe we need to conserve, or we haven't got much left in the tank to get to the end." Right now, the Phantoms look like they could go for another couple of games. Here they come again. Friedman trying to play it back in through Rosen. Toronto. Well, when you're in your third and three and you feel like you're tired when you've got a two goal advantage, you always seem to be able to find that little bit extra energy. You bet. We'll tip across the line. Mueller had to get back on side. He stays out as it's played ahead to Friedman. Jardine races back to it. Tries to find it. Timoshoff helps him out and tries to keep it away from the four checker. And now Timoshoff across the line sends it along to Brocko toward the goal. Rebound. What a save by Hart. Wow, that is left hand larceny right there by Carter Hart as uh, one of those plays where. Timoshoff with a little backhand sauce over to Brocko. The one time shot, the left pad saved by Carter Hart. The rebound comes right out to Chris Mueller, and he's just going to try and chip it up and over top into the open goal. And Carter Hart with the second effort, and he gets that left hand up there and snares it in midair and denies Toronto from pulling to within a goal on a tremendous save right there. No question by the youngster. Absolute banditry. Out front, digging for it. The Haas. Marley's with maybe the best chance that they've had in more than just a little while. Connor racing by Subban, cuts to the goal. Good play by McAdam to get a stick on. 
Here's Rosen. Down the ice from Juris. Played behind the goal. Hang ball. Grunstrom trying to reel it in, and he just could not. Hang ball. Boy, a lot of folks tipping over in this one. Rosen comes back with Becchioni right next to him. Callie Rosen sends it in behind the goal. And it is played up to the line. And on the second effort out, here's Moore in alone. Greening follows him up. Back to Sandin. He lets one fly. The Bardro makes the block. And now Moore and Marchman try to steal it away. James to Haas. As it is sent down into the corner. Jardine back up the wall. Moore. He's got Marchman with him, but he's going to have to do extra to get it to him. And he could not quite reach it again. Jardine. Roberde back. Here's Moore down the left side. You want to make a little contact there, Myers did, as T.J. Brennan reverses it back up. Marchman there to pick it up. Behind the goal, it is Mueller. And he's trying to move it back along with Marchman in it as well. Mason Marchman following up the play as it exits the phantom zone. In on goal. Jardine plays it along the near side. And Vorobiev went down hard at the end of the period and a little bit of contact and negotiation here as the first 40 minutes expire. And Vorobiev in the middle of it as he finally got back up and tried to find the, the stick that knocked him down. And Jardine has some more to say about Vorobiev as well. Everybody looking on here from both sides before they exit the ice. It should make for an interesting 20 minutes of play. Greg Carey has been in that mix and he steps off the ice and he joins Kelsey ringside. Well, Bob, the score might not be as advertised, but the chances sure are. Well, sure, early in the second period, a shorthanded breakaway by Mikhail Vorobiev gets turned aside, and just under five minutes in, it's a redirection in front by, by uh, Ingball, and it's a 2-1 hockey game. But the Lehigh Valley Phantoms would come right back and see if they could restore their two-goal lead in the hockey game, and up to the challenge was McAdam, the goaltender for Toronto, Carter Hart at the other end of the ice, forced to come up with some big saves of his own to not allow Toronto to tie up the hockey game. But late in the period, a terrific shot by Nicholas obey Cabell would restore the two-goal advantage to the 3-1 game for the Phantoms. But Toronto late in the period would try to cut the lead again, and if not for a terrific save by Carter Hart. And it ends up with a 3-1 advantage after 40 minutes of play for the Lehigh Valley Phantoms. Engvall and Obi Kubel, the goal scorers in the second period. We have got the third period coming up when we come back from the break on Leafs Nation Network. Coca-Cola Coliseum here in Toronto. Well, and Greg Carey has a couple of assists tonight, so trying to make up for it. Mason Marshman ends up in the box at the end of the second period, and the Marlies will start the game, start this third period. Down a man. As the Lehigh Valley will go to a power play. They're just the third time in the hockey game. 0 for 2. And they didn't have an opportunity in the second period of play. And they're going to look to see if they can establish a three goal advantage. And so this is a huge chance here for Toronto to try and make sure they don't allow this game to get away from themselves. Roberte. Give up that next one. Rosen. And he lifts it Aramel, and it is Veroni who gets the touch on it. They've had a couple of good chances shorthanded in this hockey game. Passes, sends it down in, and Juris along the board. Got a piece of it, and Greening very nearly got to it, but the nice little reach there keeps it in. Veroni with space. Down behind the goal, at the side of the goal, McAdam grabs onto it. So they own the zone, 
and try to come up with an opportunity, but that one just wandered to the goaltender and Eamon McAdam reached out and put the paw on it. Colin Greening remains out to take the face off. Veroni wins it back. TJ Brennan high on the line. Plays it back to Veroni. In on goal, just off goal actually, and all the way back up and out. And always the danger when you miss on the wide side. As Brennan comes back to it. TJ Brennan. Legendary status here in Toronto. As they work along the boards, here's Brennan at the line, back over to Verone. Cross, ice shot up and out of play. And all the Phantoms with some terrific puck movement and that opportunity by Greg Carey is on the stick and off in a hurry, but it takes off up high and wide and then goes around and into the netting. And I guess it must have went off a Toronto player because as a result, the faceoff still stays in the Toronto zone with 48 seconds to go on the power play opportunity here for the Phantoms. Vecchione in the bubble. It's tossed out of the faceoff circle and down it goes and it's back to P.J. Brennan again. Quickly over to Myers. Playing it over. Shot right on and off the noggin, I think, as uh, Eamon McAdam gives his head a shake and hangs on to the puck regardless. Well, Mike Vecchione, as you said, uh, went off for some repairs and is wearing the full shield to protect that gash across the nose. But Philip Myers with a good cross ice feed and Vecchione picks up the loose puck and wrists one in a high up into the shoulder area of the goaltender for Toronto and up and over the glass again. Roberti works back to it. He just tried to flip it back along the Mueller. Rosen will run to it. Big in the corner by Vorobia. They move it back and forth. Klimchuk thought that one was coming back up high. And Brennan plays it back down the wall. Big in the corner, Rosen gets it by and all the way down the ice. Carter Hart having a game here. Face 24 shots. Only one has got by. Brennan makes a move at the blue line. Vorobiev pushed off of it, but he gets it back up to Myers. To the wall. Vorobiev out front. Here's Brennan back checked by Marchman who came out of the box. And now Marchman three wide working with Greening. Marchman all over to Brooks. But it got by both Greening and Brooks. And Marchman is hit into the corner. And he is back up and heading to the bench as he hit the deck. And now he runs into a player coming off the bench. Here's Brooks. And I think he's a little more ticked off than he's hurt more than anything. Brooks looking forward in amongst his feet. This one has been a bit of a chippy one, surprisingly so. These teams won't see each other but once more. As it is lifted out of play. In this game, the, the first of the season comes uh, two months in. Well, Mason March went five goals, seven points in the last five games. And he comes out of the penalty box. He strips TJ Brennan of the puck and then heads back the other way. A three on one break coming for the Toronto Marlies and trying to thread the needle and just out of the outreach stick of Adam Brooks going to the goal. But Marchman. Uh, either you've got to shoot the puck in that situation or you've got to make sure it's a tape to tape pass so that you can get the opportunity on the putback. Brunstrom from behind the goal. Juris turns around, gives it back, and boy, that puck took about three different routes and now it heads out into the country. Jardine picks it up from uh, a rural location, and uh, Engball has that one. Off his foot and back into the hands of the Panthers. Subban. Long pass ahead. Grunstrom across the line. He's got Engvall who he drops it to. Cross side is Juris. Leaving it. Shot. Hart with a great save on Sam Jardine. And back come the Phantoms. Ferroni looking for a little bit of help. There's a bomb in on goal. And 
and it is turned aside by Eamon McAdam. Up high it comes. Here's another blast, and boy, the Phantoms are just firing the puck hard at Eamon McAdam. Well, but both teams with great chances, and it starts at the Phantom end of the ice as the Marlies come across the Ingball to Juris, and then the drop pass, and coming in from the blue line is Sam Jardine, the defenseman, and Carter Hart comes out, cuts the rebound, makes the good save, and then Philippe Meyer comes down, and he unleashes a shot from the top of the left faceoff circle, and swallowing it up is McAdam. Tipped out front, still laying there, and kicked away, and now we're going to see a penalty. Vecchioni is going to go into the box. He's going to get the hooking call against as the veteran Chris Mueller goes to pick up the loose puck behind that goal line after it was kicked from the front of the net back there. And Vecchioni gets the stick on Mueller. So the Toronto Marlies, who trail 3 1 in this third period of play, are looking to see if they can cut into that two goal deficit with a power play goal. They're one for or zero, or 0 for 4 coming into this fifth opportunity of the hockey game. Like to get their power play going. The home power play is picked up uh, three yesterday against the Penguins. We'd like to add to this that this afternoon as Juris comes in to take the draw. And it wiggles its way back to Subban. He fires one and that's just wide. Bardro back at the line. Subban got it in his feet. Now here come the Phantoms again. They've got a nose for some shorthanded opportunities. Four shorthanded goals on the year as their fifth ranked penalty killers continue to keep Toronto at bay. Brunstrom sends it back to the line. Subban keeps it in. Engball trying to get it back up high. Subban cross ice. Juris Engball. He just kind of caught him on the hill of the stick and he couldn't get the shot away. Grunstrom comes back to pick it up. And that one gets by Subban all the way down the ice. Well, Jordan Subban inserted into the game today because of uh, a couple of injuries uh, on the back end and uh, had been scratched for the last five games. So back in and uh, trying to get his game back in order in a hurry, but not quite working out the way he would have liked. Mueller waits on it out front, tip off the goaltender again from Trevor Moore and back up at the line and out. That looked like a good yeah, chance. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, again, right on the doorstep, but Carter Hart showing some real good athleticism getting from his left to his right and covering the whole low part of the net to make sure the puck doesn't get by him. There's Rasmus Sandin stepping out. Borobiev right next to him. Bronco over across the line. They keep it on side. They say he did, but it sure didn't look like it. McAdam. And he got time ticking here. And that one will not find its way, and that will do it. Vecchioni is ready to step back out as Corrado comes up bites. They'll get by the penalty box, but Vecchioni joins in. We're back to five on five, and the Marlies 0 for 5 on the power play this afternoon. Here's a chance. Scores! Clinchuk rips one past Carter Hart to make it 3-2. Well, nothing like scoring goals to make your presence felt quite quickly in a new uniform. An empty net goal by Klimchuk yesterday to seal the victory against Wilkesbury Scranton. And he just after the power play expires, he comes off the bench with some fresh legs. He picks up the loose puck, a little shake and bake, and he finds an opening and he fires it past the left pad of the goaltender, Carter Hart. And the Marlies have cut the lead to 3-2 on Klimchuk's fifth goal of the campaign. And lots of time left with 13.45 to go here in period number three. And second goal here with the Marlins. He was with the Stockton Heat. And he came over in the trade, and now he's got two goals in two games for the Toronto Marlins. I guess he likes the change of scene. Well, sometimes that's exactly what the doctor ordered. 
And, uh, you know, Andrew Nielsen going the opposite direction to go to Stockton. Uh, hopefully things will work out well for him. But Klimchuk obviously feeling pretty good about what's transpired as he's got a goal in each of his first two games. Grundstrom was quick after it as they send it back out into center ice. McDonald. We'll see how the Lehigh Valley Phantoms answer back here because after the Marley scored the first goal, they came out of Aurora. Up ice, Rosen finding Juris high off the windows. Grundstrom has that one get by him. Vorobiev sends it right back out as Jardine comes back to it. They make changes. Here comes Jardine again and uh, the four check does its job and forces him to make another decision. Engball comes back through the middle. Brooks gathers it in, comes across the blue line and works it onto the backhand. And Trevor Moore from behind the goal. Wilcox squeezes him off of it and it is picked up in a shot by Marchman. Backhand chance by Moore and neither one of them find it. Pass Carter Hart. Adam Brooks upended on that play. Well, Trevor Moore had a good look, but he just was, you know, reached out and he's got it on his backhand and he can't get enough on it to get an opportunity on the goal to see if he can get the tying tally. Vecchione trying to confuse the issue and he does it enough that the Marlins are having trouble getting up ice. In front of the benches, that one finds its way loose, and Vecchione picks it up. He's got Jardine in front of him, launches one, and a great play line by Loverde with an empty net in front of him was Obi Kubel. But Loverde makes a good play to make sure he didn't get the shot away. Back up through the middle, captured by Subban. He comes back across the line. That was offside. Morgan Klimchuk has brought the Marlies to within one here in the third period. Back with more after the break. Well, Vincent Laverde, the veteran who's won his second Calder Cup this past year with the Toronto Marlies. You know, you look at your goaltenders to come up with the initial save, but you need your defenseman to help you out to clear rebounds. And Nicholas Obey Kubel was bearing down on that loose puck, and you get the veteran Laverde who chops it to safety and to prevent the fans from restoring their two goal advantage as the Marlies with 11 14 to go here in the third trail by a score of three to two. Mueller off the draw he wins it back. Rosen off the boards and in. Brennan didn't get to it. Here's Subban. He waits on it. Sends it over to Rosen. Out front and looking for somebody to tip it in. I think he had his eye on Jeremy Bracco. DJ Brennan picking it up. Mueller trying to get him to make a decision. Throws it. Back to Subban. Ahead to Brocco and he plays it along. Brennan in the corner. Coming in after him. Timishaw. Boy, he came flying in after Brennan. And now Brennan gives Mueller a shot. But I think Timishaw is going to well, go to the box. I think Timishaw got is going to get the initial penalty. And uh, I believe it's going to be the only one. And uh, I don't, you know, this is a play where TJ Brennan comes in, he throws the brakes on, and he cuts back the other way, and he loses his balance a little bit. But Timishov comes from across the ice, and he is going to throw his shoulder into Brennan. And you see where Brennan trying to get out of the way, and then a little cross check by Mueller the, to add a little insult to injury there. But the only man who ends up in the penalty box is Timishoff, and he's going to get the elbowing call. So the Lehigh Valley Phantoms, who've got a one goal advantage with 10.40 to go, looking to see if they can get their two goal advantage back that they've had a couple of times in this hockey game. Well, Timishoff was in the box earlier in the hockey game. Long shot from Brennan. And boy, we have seen that in this building more than a few times. Well, T.J. Brennan uh, spoke earlier of him with uh, having two Eddie Shore trophies for best defenseman here in the American Hockey League. He had two 25-goal seasons as a Toronto Marley uh, from the blue line. 
a 72 point and 68 point season in which both times he came away with the award and Eddie Shore trophy has real credit to him as he had two terrific campaigns here in a Marley uniform. Got to let another one go there. Veroni steps by. Here comes another blast and McAdam. There's the whistle, but they were still working on it. TJ Brennan, he lets another one fly there, and now he has a little chat with no, Greg Carey not, about it. He is not afraid to shoot the puck, that's for <laughs> sure. And, uh, he's got the ability to one time it almost the best I've seen in uh, many, many years. And again, here it's rolling on him, but he still unleashes it. He gets it through and forces McAdam to come up with a good save and then scramble to make sure that the Phantoms can't pounce on that loose puck. It's great support, TJ Brennan. Great family down there. And he gets to play close to home. Brennan, there's a longer long blast scrambling for it, McAdam. Boy, that is what they are looking for, isn't it? Well, Eamon McAdam again, save for save against Carter Hart in this one. And 36 shots for Lehigh Valley, 31 for Toronto. And again, the defense play, pitch and catch, and the one time shot, the initial save, and then the second back put back opportunity by Chris Connor standing on the top of the blue paint. And McAdam turns them both aside. Carey will come in to take the draws. Veroni tossed out, calling Greening opposite. And Greening trying to get to it. And Brennan picks it up. Quickly finding Baroni. He looked like he had a shot there, but then thought it out again. Rolling back up high, Brennan. Baroni down the wall. Rosen with a touch back out front. It comes diving over, but too late was McAdam. And that is in the goal. And the two goal lead, Chris Connor restores for the Phantoms. Well, I'll tell you, this is pinpoint passing by the Lehigh Valley Phantoms. Brennan down to Veroni, and then he's going to dish it down low, and it's back up to the circle and all the way across the ice to Chris Connor, and he makes no mistake of putting it in the back of the net past the outstretched left arm of McAdam, the Toronto goalkeeper, and the 10th goal of the year for Connor on a power play again has restored the two goal advantage to 4 2 game in favor of the Phantoms. Well, and you know, your power play is uh, humming along. Here's Trevor Moore coming right back in, lets one fly into the pads. When uh, Moore's thinking he's got to get and he comes back over to the bench, and he's looking over at the official, no call. Everybody got a touch on that power play. On the final run to the goal, it ended up being Chris Connor. Back up it comes. Marchman playing it back, trying to find Grunstrom. Sandin, lots of time still in this one. Corrado plays it in. Platters off the glass as Engvall tried to kick it ahead, looking for somebody along the board. But it is only Phantoms there as they come back out with it. They have got. A good hockey club here for Lehigh Valley. Back Subban comes across the line. He tried to play it back over for Grunstrom, but it's picked up and now racing back. Obi Kubel rips one into the window. Back up the line. De Haas able to get to it. Engball rides him off of it. And he comes back and plays it to his defenseman. Long pass ahead. Juris has to come back on. Looking for Timoshaw. All the way back, Subban behind the goal, and he finds a little help here in Sam Jardine, who wanted to move it swiftly up to Timisha. Friedman comes back to it. And as you say, things are tight, though, in the Atlantic Division, tight in the North Division as well, as Mueller looks to escape out of the corner. He gets it back and chips it up the wall. Timisha has Bronco there, but he waits on it and then sends it cross ice. Bronco had to get back quickly on the light pass as Jardine comes behind the goal. He well, nearly ran into teams trouble. Now just past the 20 game plateau and Rocco. They're bunched up big time as parody has 
found the American Hockey League as well. Has it ever? It, it really is tight amongst most of the teams. Nobody out of it early and nobody running away with it too much early. The Phantoms, Connor comes up with a power play goal in the third. 20 year old Carter Hart from Stewart Park, Alberta, and the CHL's top goalie in junior hockey last winter in his first year here in the American Hockey League uh, having a decent start but here this afternoon in Toronto playing some terrific hockey as he's made 30 saves on 32 shots and his Lehigh Valley Phantoms have a 4-2 advantage with 743 to play in the third period as Carter Hart the top prospect for the Philadelphia Flyers Applying his trade here in the American Hockey League and uh, really starting to find some traction. Well, and the key is, uh, as we kind of alluded to earlier in the American Hockey League, can you keep your hands off long enough to let the guy develop? And uh, that is uh, that is a tall order sometimes, especially when the, right. when the big club isn't doing that well. You sometimes think. Let's just bring the guys up yes. and see what they can do. Well, and you're absolutely right. And the Philadelphia Flyers uh, have gone through so many goaltenders over uh, the past many years. And uh, they really look like they've drafted the right guy. And you look at what he's accomplished so far in his young career. And now in his first year as a professional, starting to really look like that guy. But... Let's not throw him into the hornet's nest. And uh, uh, I think that would be something where the Flyers are really going to look to take their time and be patient. And Here's a chance. Marchman shoots and a blocker save by Hart. And uh, Marchman didn't get the kind of shot he would have liked in that situation. Getting much on it. There's more at the back of the goal. Up along the boards. Sandin tried to play it past. The defender, and he just did not. Roberde again. Trying to find some speed back through the middle. A little backhander. Roberde over to the far boards. It is a change at D in Corrado. Comes back to it. Marchman catches it. He's got Brooks going to the goal, but he picks it up and trying to whip it in there himself. But he never got the shot away. Long one thumps off the boards, and Jardine will bring it back as the Marlies will make some changes because that's an icing call. Well, and Mason Marchman, who's got eight goals on the year, five in the last seven games, looking to see if he can pull his club to within a goal as he tracks down this loose puck, and he's getting bothered on the backside from Philip Samuelson, and Samuelson with one hand trying to get a little chop on him, but Marchman trying to curl and drag it and then fire it short side shelf doesn't get much on it but Carter Hart turns him aside with the blocking glove Brunstrom getting some education there in the circle it is bing ball as he lifts one to the goal but he finds the goaltender again well Pierre Engvall who scored his seventh of the season here to open the scoring for Toronto gets an opportunity as there was a battle in the faceoff circle and it squirts free to him and he fires a quick shot and Hart again coming up with it not allowing him a second opportunity. That one pops up and Myers moves it quickly. Up ahead. Toronto all the way back. And he turns back. He figured coming back up the far side might be an easier route as he chips it along. Grundstrom gives it a touch, but he knew he was offside. And so they just will bring that one back. And I think they're going to bring it all the way back, actually. Yeah, the pass came from inside the Toronto zone, so it ends up with the faceoff all the way back. Well, here's the next three games for the Toronto Marlies, all on Leafs Nation Network as we see the Providence Bruins, the Laval Rocket, the Montreal Canadiens affiliate, the American Hockey League, and the Ottawa Senators affiliate, the Belleville Senators. Marlies will see them a lot yep. this season. Game two of a six-game homestand here for Toronto. Clark still with it. Emerson Clark plays it along. Good weight to it, but Obi Kubel 
is able to get to it. Play it back up through the middle. It bounces in front of Rosen. He quickly moves it back to Green. And you find Subban. Sharply ahead, Klimchuk got a nice looking goal in this one. The second one of the hockey game. Reaches back. He's knocked down from behind. And it is just now the Phantoms who are thinking to themselves with less than six minutes to go. Let's try and keep this one in positive territory and not get too fancy. Subban. Goldborn able to convince him to get rid of the puck. And Loverde comes back to it. Loverde reaches into it. Race into the corner. Comes back up to Brennan. And now Loverde. Klimchuk wanted to get a race on it and get a real run to it, but uh, they were in interested in a change as well. Sandin retreats. He knew he had Loverde caught deep. And now Moore misplays in a hooking call as Lear was heading to penalty shot. Yeah, we're going to a penalty shot. Oh, the second time for the yeah. Phantoms in two games. Oh, you're right. And Taylor Lear full marks as he gets a good stick and he strips Trevor Moore of the puck and he's home free on a breakaway and he gets pulled down from the backside as he tries to beat Eamon McAdam. McAdam comes up with the save, but it's going to be a, a penalty shot. And last night in Belleville, the That's Phantoms, Chris, uh, Chris Connor gets the penalty shot and then it ended up being the game winning goal as they won 4 2 in Belleville and a 3 2 overtime victory in Laval Friday night. So back to back victories. And here today, 4.50 to go with a penalty shot looking to see if they can stretch the lead to three. Here comes Lear. Across the blue line. Scores. Lear on the penalty shot. Puts the Phantoms up 5 2. Well, a terrific job by Taylor Lear as he comes in and he uses his speed and then really does a great job with his body he drops the shoulder and then he fires it short side over that right pad of goaltender Eamon McAdam and the fourth goal of the season has now extended the lead to 5 2 in favor of the Phantoms with 450 to play here in Toronto. Players fourth goal as you see there is the Marlies now working back from a three goal deficit. Sandin fires it back in. Samuelson turns around and long pass ahead as they were intending to find a little help all the way down ice but that one picked up on the icing call and it's a hard thing to figure out Bob in a situation like this and the coaches will go over it and figure it out but does one team just come out in this game and, and start to dominate or is it something that your team did that was special on the afternoon or not so special well and it's a game of mistakes there's no question about it and uh, you got to give uh, the Phantoms some credit here because they've had some good leg juice in the legs here the whole hockey game and considering that this is their third game in less than three days and the Marlies back to back four o'clock starts here uh, at the Coca-Cola Coliseum and uh, they haven't they've been a step behind for much of the game here in this one. Rosen down low looking out front kicked at by Timishoff and he doesn't get a shot away or an opportunity. Puck finds some open ice with less than four minutes to play. Loverde after it. Emerson Clark. Came back after an injury, and this is his first game. As we come back to TJ Brennan. Let's one fly. Bounces off of McAdam. He shakes his mask. Throws him back up. Brennan in the mix, and it is Klimchuk back through the middle. Colin Greening across the line into the. Phantom zone. Oh. Dig for it comes loose as Brennan looks up ice. And he put together a fairly solid offensive outing. That high fly ball drops in, but uh, the whistle on the play is going to bring that one back out. 
Well, two nights in a row for the Lehigh Valley Phantoms and both successful on the penalty shot. Well, we have a 5-2 hockey game, and how did we get there? Phil Baroni opened the scoring for the Phantoms. It was 2-0 after 20 minutes of play. Engvall would get his seventh to make it a 2-1 game, but then Obey Kubel makes it a 3-1 hockey game. Klimchuk cut it to 3-2, but Chris Connor would make it a 4-2 game and then a 5-2 game on a penalty shot by Taylor Lear. And with 3-10 to go, the Phantoms look to be in full control of this one and they looking for their as they will look for their 13th victory of the season. Oh, try to jump into third spot in the Atlantic Division. As the Marlies continue to try to find a way to move up. They were in the basement earlier this year and they have put together a good little 10 game run but still remain in fifth in the North Division. Long one ahead, but uh, that is going to come all the way back. 2.52 left to go in the third period. Yeah, an offside call. And, you know, the Toronto Marlies coming into this game, uh, you know, 4 0 oh, 1 in their last five games. Uh, as you said, the 10 game run, uh, but more so the last five to crawl their way back uh, or out of the basement. And if, with, if they were able to win a game here this afternoon, uh, would have vaulted them. Uh, into a playoff position into fourth place, but uh, coming away looking like it's going to be an empty one, no question. After this one, as they continue to lead here with 2:40 to play and a 5-2 advantage for the visitors. Well, and always preferable to come up with uh, a chance to fight off the guys who are coming after you, rather than fight to get after the guys ahead of you. Yes, and uh, and that is something where uh, I know talking with Sheldon Keith before the game, it's it's the opportunity to look who's above us and that's who we're chasing. We're not really worried about the guys behind us. We got to worry about ourselves, win our games and try to track down the people in front of us. Passed ahead to Engvall. They uh, faced a good hockey club here this afternoon. Samuelson tries to fire it in. And now here comes Grunson. He's got a step behind Wilcox. Comes in and Wilcox makes a great defensive play. And Grunstrom wanted a call. He didn't get it. Uh, we, Wilcox with a great stick as he gets it around and knocks the puck away before Grunstrom can get that shot on Carter Hart. Grunstrom was not a believer that that wasn't a penalty. Jardine retreats with it. Roverde looks up Feist. They've got a minute 45 left to go. And then, boy, these fans are relentless in this hockey game. Here comes Adam Brooks. Brooks on a backhand. Tried to sneak one by, but Carter Hart didn't leave him many opportunity to put that one over his shoulder. He got in close to it. We'll take a look at this. We'll get a look at Reese Wilcox, the Surrey BC native, and six foot four. And there he uses his reach. And a good job. He 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 pushes it to one side and then gets his stick around and trips it around the other side. And then Toronto comes right back the other way. And Adam Brooks trying to go short side shelf on Carter Hart. And he gets turned aside again. A tap there. And it's played back in as McAdam gives it back and a misplay by McAdam at the back of the goal. Jardine. Up and trying to find Marchman ahead of him. And it doesn't quite get there, but now it springs loose. It's Jardine sends it back off the boards looking for Marchman. Stepping in the way. Hard hit along the boards by Marchman. And he takes a bit of cross check coming back at it. Well, and that was Philippe Myers who got the brunt of that one. And uh, he gives Marchman a little cross check, but then he heads to the bench because I think he was shaken up a little bit because he went in pretty heavily in those boards right in front of the Toronto bench. Roberto sent it in. Phantoms get it right back out and nearly cut. The Marlies on a change. Goldborn out front looking for Bardro. No connection for that. 
Emerson Clark fighting in front of the bench is uh, time ticking away here in the third period. No whistle as they send it all the way back and that should pretty much do it with uh, a little over 10 seconds still to go here. And they can just hang on to it and call it a day. 5-2 going to be the final here as the Toronto Marlies will fall to the Lehigh Valley Phantoms on a Sunday afternoon. Bob, well, your thoughts on the game? Well, it certainly was, a, I thought it was a, a much spirited game where you had lots of action at both ends of the ice, but the Toronto Marlies uh, continue to have a difficult time keeping the puck out of their net. The 11th time this year that they've given up five goals or more. Well, we will be back to wrap things up here from Coca-Cola Coliseum in Toronto in just a moment. All right, so we have a final there from Toronto. The Phantoms over the Marlies, 5-2. to two. NHL tonight getting you set for 7 p.m.